Uh, so, Mok, if you are ready, then we can start the session. Okay. Yeah, up to you. I don't have Somok? any problem. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, very good evening, one and all. So, this is uh, uh, today we are going to start one more webinar. That is uh, that, and our invited speaker is uh, Dr. Somak Bhattacharya. So he is a prof assistant professor of uh, IIT BHU, and uh, the talk what he is going to present today that is on recent adverts advancement of research in meta surface for high frequency applications. So without wasting much time, let me introduce formally the speaker today. Dr. Samok Bhattacharya has received honors in physics from Scottish Church College, Kolkata in 2003. Next to it, he has received both Bachelor of Technology and Master of Technology from Institute of Radio Physics and Electronics in University of Calcutta in 2006 and 2008, respectively. He had carried out the MTech thesis in giant metro or metri wave radio telescope of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. He is the recipient of university gold medal due to scoring first positions in MTech. He had also served as a lecturer in Academy of Technology in 2009. He received his PhD degree in 2015 from in Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur. He had continued as senior project engineer in the Department of Electrical Engineering in IIT Kanpur for a brief period of six months, after which he had joined the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at Indian Institute of Information Technology, Allahabad, in December 2015. Since 2016 December, he is working as assistant professor in the Department of Electronics Engineering at Indian Institute of Technology, that is Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi. He has also published more than 30 international journals and 80 reputed peer reviewed international and national conference proceedings. He has received the prestigious Young Scientist Award from International Union of Radio Science three times, Electromagnetic Theory Symposium 2013 in Hiroshima, Regional Radio Science Conference 2015 in New Delhi, and Asia Pacific Radio Science Conference 2016 in Seoul. Owing to his contributions in the area of radio science, Ushi has confirmed him honorary honor in any lifetime fellow membership. He has served as potential reviewer to nearly 40 journals, including IEEE transactions on antenna and propagations, IEEE antenna and wireless propagation letters, IEEE microwave and wireless component letters, IEEE photonic technology letters, electronics letter, nature specific reports, Pinjar Applied Physics, etc. He has organized 2020 Ushi Regional Conference on Radio Science in IIT BHU, where nearly 300 delegates were present all over the India. Dr. Bhattacharya is an IEEE senior member. Recently, he has also been selected as Life Fellow of the Optical Society of India. His current area of interest lies in metamaterial, metasurface, periodic structure, optomicrowave devices, etc. So, Dr. Bhattacharya, on behalf of IEEE Antenna Propagation Society Kerala chapter, I Shukamal De, thank you so much for accepting our request. And now, stage is yours. You can start your talk. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Professor Dev, for uh, the nice introduction. I don't know how much I deserve among the so. So today, the Sunday evening, I am going to spoil your Sunday evening now for one year, I guess, that uh, I am going to talk about some recent advancement of research in metasurface for high frequency applications. So what I will do that I will tell about in fact some uh, the metasurface applications and from first I will just quickly 
just uh, introduce the concept and then we will go with some recent developments of research which we are carrying out in our uh, group over here in Varanasi. Okay. And uh, so to start with, so where I am from, so as you know that, that Varanasi it is a city in the eastern portion of UP or Uttar Pradesh, very close to Bihar border, situated on the bank of the river Ganges. Okay, and uh, we are having over here that with this particular place, as you already know, that this is very famous for the innumerable number, innumerable carts on situated or lying on the river Ganges. Okay, and each of them are having some distinct criteria or salient features. And uh, uh, the famous one is that if you are visiting this place or if you have not visited yet, maybe once the COVID will be over. Hello? Sir, uh, yes. Uh, uh, Abdul, what happened? He, uh, he has joined. He has joined. I have to yes. make me. You have to make him the host yes, so that he can share his screen. Yes. Yes. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are very much audible. Uh, so I'm sorry that I got uh, disconnected somehow. I don't know. Uh, okay. Just let me just let me know. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I think I was here. So till the previous slide, I think I was. Uh, uh, I, I have. It was. I finally, I don't know what happened. So sir, what we. I, sir, sorry yeah. for interruption, sir. Please yeah. make me a source. Sir. Uh, okay. This is Abdul. This is okay. Abdul. So how, yeah, so I have to make more than make host, right? Yes. Okay. Now is it fine? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So one thing, let me just ask the question. The questions will be addressed at the last, right? All the questions will be yes, taken yes, at the last? Yes, okay. okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes. And yeah. also, as you mentioned it, Dr. Somok, so I yeah. request all participants, uh, please kindly ask the question directly to the speaker. After okay. The Okay, okay, fine, fine. So, yeah, so we are co located with the erstwhile Banaras Hindu University campus, which is incidentally the largest campus of Asia. And how large we are having a dedicated auto service within the campus itself. You can, in fact, you can, it is much more visible over here. This is the main gate of the Banaras Hindu University of BHU. That you can, if you can able to uh, read the, uh, the Devnagari script, you can see here that it is written that Kashi Hindu. Vishwa Vidyalaya, and here the autos are basically, it is over here. So this is within the campus itself. And uh, what you can have that within the campus, we are having a beautiful temple that we also, uh, this is also another Vishwanath temple. This is the, not the, uh, the famous uh, Kashi Vishwanath temple. This is another Vishwanath temple within the campus itself. And we, uh, in, in general, we call it as BT, 
okay, within the campus itself. And once you are coming from the main gate, so the VT will come. After that, the campus of IIT will start. So we used to tell that take the blessings from the VT and from Lord Vishwanath, and you are most welcome to enter into the uh, IIT BHU campus. So now I am coming to the, the technical stuff. So what I am just telling first that what are the, the modes of the high frequency communications. So as you can see that high frequency communication mainly it is, uh, you know, that it is restricted at the two frequencies, mainly towards the microwave range and in the optical range. Okay. Because you know that as in the, if you are moving towards the higher frequency band, so what you can have, you can avail much more bandwidth as per the Carson's law. And if you are having more availability of bandwidth, accordingly, you can have more number of channels as per Shannon law, C equal to B log to one plus SNR, if the other parameters remaining constant. So what you can have, you will, you will have that with the enhancement of bandwidth, you will have more channel capacity, which will give you that more number of channels, you can propagate over the single one. And here I'm showing you some, you know, some tentative applications like mobile, satellite, or radio astronomical applications. And uh, this microwave range, if you can, if you ask me that it is lying between 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz in a crude way, that is having the wavelength of one millimeter to one meter. The next band is uh, the optical band, and which is lying between 30 to 3000 terahertz. And what you are having in between the two, in between the two, you are having a gap, which is known as the terahertz gap. Okay, so what you can do in this terahertz gap, you can take the advantage from both this microwave as well as from the optical side. Um, just let me just uh, interrupt. Can you please uh, can you please see my cursor? Yes, sir. I can okay. see you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, just let me just tell you in a historical way that uh, the wireless communication it all started with uh, you know that if you consider the pioneers of this wireless communication. So these three are these three uh, people are the pioneers over here, pioneering figures. So Sir Henry Harge, after which the unit of frequency has been named. Then our own Jagadish Chandra Bose from India, okay, that who had made a remarkable research in uh, this particular domain. And followed by that, you are also having that uh, Professor Markani that who used to that who had backed the Nobel Prize over there in 1920, the famous Nobel, Nobel Prize, the controversial one. And both Jagadish Bose and uh, Marconi being contemporary, so they have shown that this one, that they, they have demonstrated the wireless propagation. So what you can see over here, that Jagadish Bose, he had demonstrated this work that in, uh, you know, that over a short distance, you can see over here that the wireless can propagate in free space. So that kind of things he had first developed. And let me tell you that uh, the interesting part is that everything has been done, has been uh, made in, in his lab only. And uh, it was done by himself over there. No instrument, nothing was procured from outside. Okay, he had done everything developed by himself. So this was the one work so the, that uh, he had carried out in Kolkata in Presidency College mostly that uh, over there and I'm showing you that this has been carried out in 60 gigahertz, the first millimeter wave communication research in not only in India, all over the world. And uh, he, here you can see he's, he's demonstrating his work in 1997 at Royal Institution London. If you just recall that time India was not independent and just think about his legacy. He was invited to present his research in London that uh, how, uh, how in just you think of that, how brilliant was his research. And here you can see the Marconi tower, which he has used for first long distance communication between the England and Newfoundland. And later that this Jagadish Chandra Bose work, in fact, this is 1897, just exactly at 100 years later, if you see over here, and if you see, uh, just let me just give, you, give, give us a minute, okay? So if you see over here, that in 1997, you can see that this is this conference is a very co famous conference known as IMS in the microwave domain, and it is you it is has been held in either in US or in Canada in every year. So just you think of that one research symposium on microwave. So that had been just making this particular paper that you are having that the legacy of the work of J the Jagadish Chandra Bose hundred years of millimeter wave research. So you read the abstract very carefully, 
Just 100 years ago, Jesse was described to the Royal Institution in London. His research carried out in Calcutta at millimeter wavelength. He used wave dials, horn antennas, dielectric lenses, various polarizers, and even semiconductor set frequencies as high as 60 gigahertz. Some concepts from his original 1897 papers have been incorporated into a new 1.3 millimeter multi beam receiver now in use on the NRAO 12 meter telescope. Just you think of the legacy he had. And even after 15 years of this work, that you can see over here that US agency, this US one, just I'm showing you a paper cutting, this US agency is nothing but IEEE, which honors the works of Jesse Bose and C.B. Raman. And they had handed over a plaque to the authority of Presidency College, Kolkata. So they had, I am showing, it's just sharing you the plaque over here. So just you can see over here that the first millimeter wave communication experiments by Jesse Bose during 1894 to 1896. Sajagadis Chandra Bose in 1895 first demonstrated as Presidency College, Calcutta, India, the transmission and reception of electromagnetic waves at 60 gigahertz over a distance of 23 meters through two intervening walls by remotely ringing a bell and detonating gunpowder. For his communication system, Bose developed entire millimeter wave components, such as a spark transmitter, coherent dielectric lens, polarizer, horn antennas, and cylindrical deflection plating. It was handed over to the Presidency College Authority in September 2012, so just 15 years later of this particular published work. Okay. So to start with from here, just let me go to that well. So at that time, so you just think of that already people were going advanced and as we are going with the higher frequency, the most important thing is that you know need some kind of miniaturization. So with that one, we start with our discussion on the frequency selective surface. So which is nothing a periodic structure over a two dimensional surface. So you can see over here, that you are having some kind of metallic, uh, you know, that some metallic patch, if they are arranged in a two dimensional plane, okay. And what you may have, you may have either a metallic slot or maybe some kind of metallic patch, whatever you are having in a two dimensional plane. And here, if the periodicity of the structure, that is the distance between this to this or between this to this, if this one is between, if this is lying in the sub wavelength region, if this distance is lying in the sub wavelength region under that condition, you can consider this structure can be considered as a meta surface. So essentially what is happening, the meta surface means the very first thing you are having a two dimensional surface where the periodicity is less than lambda by four. Why this has been made so that the phenomena like diffraction or scattering that should not have any kind of, you know, that any kind of significant effect, rather you should have the effect of the phenomena like reflection or transmission that should dominate. So to start with, we are having for a number of applications of metasurface. The very first one is metasurface absorber. So what we are having for absorption, suppose you are having a, a thin slab where in which that some wave is incident. So a part of wave is reflected back and a part of wave is transmitted. You know already from uh, microwave or from uh, at the microwave frequencies, they are represented by scattering parameters S11 or S21, okay? Now, once you are having this S11 or S21, so you know that the, in, the input impedance, you can write in this particular form, that is this here, here eta naught is the free space impedance. And what you can have that, you can have that if you just shield it on the other side with a metallic backing. So if you are having some metal over here, so you can write easily, that is two one squared equal to zero because there is no transmission of electromagnetic wave, right? Now what is happening? Suppose this is the structure and here some wave is incident. So you can very easily, you can write the absorbed power or absorbed power is nothing but this is the reflectivity or R, okay? This is the reflected power and this is the transmitted power T. So you can simply have the reflected power and the transmitted power. So transmitted power is already made zero. So it's two one squared equal to zero. This is nothing but the transmitted power T. So what you can have, you can simply write it as one minus S11 squared. So if you can simply minimize this S11 or minimize this particular quantity, what you can lead to, you can go with the enhancement of the absorptivity. Okay, this is the very basic principle of absorption. And what you can have from this equation, you can write the S11 in this form. 
And what you want, if you want to have exactly 100% uh, absorption coefficient, so you need that S11 should be equal to zero. So what you write, you should have that Z omega, you should write it, I can make it equal to eta naught so that if I have that S11 equal to zero. So how I can write Z omega? So this is nothing but root over, I am sorry that my handwriting does not go well with this one because I am just writing by using mouse. So mu naught, mu effective by epsilon naught, epsilon effective, if I write like this way, so that is equal to root over mu naught by epsilon naught, where mu effective and epsilon effective are the effective permeability and effective permittivity of this particular medium. So once you are having it like this way, that effective permittivity and effective permeability, so what you can have that once if you just equate, so that this means you must have in this case that mu effective should be equal to epsilon effective. So this is the condition which you have to satisfy to make a metasurface absorber. Or I should say in other words, if you want to have the minimization of any kind of deflection coefficient, you should uh, satisfy the condition, the effective permeability should be equal to effective permittivity. So this is the very first point. And here I am showing the unit cell or the meta atom of a uh, of an absorber, which is basically absorbing at a single frequency. So here, what is happening? This one, this red one, is the metal patch, okay, that which has been made with copper. And then you are having this yellow one is a FR4 dielectric with a one millimeter thickness. Or the back side of this one, you are having another shielded copper, okay. So if you were making an optimized as this uh, dimensions you may get, uh, you know that some kind of absorption peak you are getting at this one, which is operating at 7.46 gigahertz. So you are getting nearly 100% absorption at this particular frequency. So next to it, what you one can study that if you go for scaling, scaling means what? Scaling means your periodicity remains constant, okay? While you are just going with the scaling or multiplying of each of the geometrical di the dimensions. So what you are doing, that once you are enhancing those factors, you know the effective area will change and as you are having the effective area that will enhance, so if you are going with higher scaling factors, so what will have, that it will occupy more metallic strip and this will give you that uh, enhancement of the effective inductance or the effective capacitance, which in turn gives you that the lowering of the frequency of absorption and that is exactly which is evident from this particular graph that if you can see that if you are having the, once you are going from 0.9 to one, so here you are having one decrease, again from one to 1.1, you are having a further decrease. So that you can see over here. So this is the one I'm just showing over here. And if you consider the 7.46 gigahertz, if you compute the wavelength at this frequency that is coming nearly 40 millimeter or four centimeter, which gives you the thickness of the dielectric is of the order of lambda by 40. So this is one of the important aspect over here. So from here, you can uh, think of designing a dual band absorber from this particular uh, method or this particular concept. So here you are making a super cell where which is made of two different subcells of subcells one and subcells two. So subcells one, they are scaled up by a factor of 1.2 with respect to the original dimension while subcell two is by 1.3. And this gives you two different minima reflection minima at these two points or two different ma uh, uh, absorption maxima at these two points. So they are basically at 5.64 and 6.22 gigahertz. So essentially what you are getting, you are achieving a dual band absorption in the C band, okay? And uh, the important thing is, well, you have designed it. Now you have to make some kind of, you know, you have to characterize this one experimentally. So what you have to do, you have to make to fabricate the structure, okay? So the once you are going with the fabrication of the structure, you can see this is the enlarged view. So if you ask me, sir, how much I can get? Well, you make it as much high as possible. But the basic thing is that whenever you are keeping it, you have to make sure so that the structure can be properly illuminated. So essentially what is happening, some wave is going from here, it is striking this surface and that which is coming back and then it is interpreted by the other one. So this you have to take care. So the dimension is something around 240 mm cos 240 mm, which has been fabricated. 
And within the anechoic chamber, you are having a pair of antennas that which are identical in nature. One is transmitting, another one is receiving. They have been connected to a vector network analyzer. And suppose this is the one you are having. So first, what you are having, you should need some kind of reference. And how this reference can be done? This reference can be easily done by placing a metal surface from where you have 100% reflection. So you can do that uh, or you can achieve it by putting this uh, red line dot from the copper surface, you are having this reflection. And then you are replacing this copper surface with some the, with the absorber surface or the proposed structure with uh, the 240 mm plus 240 mm dimension. The difference between the two will give you the actual reflection from the structure. And this in turn will give you the absorptivity from here. And well, that out of the band, you are getting some kind of noises, okay, that which you can subsequently improve by having some kind of, you know, there's some kind of getting or just go, going with uh, by applying some other methodology in the vector network analyzer. So this is one concept. And <clears throat> what is happening over here that dual band absorber can also be achieved by having that two different type of single band unit cells. They have been, you know, that here you can see they have been made within a single, uh, within a simple meta atom. Okay, you can basically you can combine. So this one plus this one, you can make it something like this. You are coming up with the with the resultant uh, meta atom or resultant single band absorber, something like this. So what you can have that once you are having this and excited properly, it is exhibiting a dual band absorption. And you know that what is the interesting feature over here? that whenever you are having phi zero degree, phi zero degree means nothing but, that is the electric field which is oriented with respect to x direction or nothing but the polarization of the electromagnetic field. So once it is zero degree polarized or it is polarized along x direction, you are getting dual band. While it is 90 degree, that is whenever it is polarized along this direction, you are getting a single band. But what you know that you can have this one at a frequency separate from these two frequencies. So these two ones, you can, if you go back to the previous slides, so you are getting at 5.46 or 9.54, while you are getting something at 7.4. This one is, you are getting something at 7.4. So you can see at 5.46, what you are having, that all these gaps, they are getting excited due to this electric field, you are having the bunching. And while the middle one, okay, it is mainly responsible for absorption at the higher frequency. But in the middle one, what is happening? that at 7.4, that is the third one, you can see the adjoining metallic strips, they are playing the major role so that you can have some kind of absorption or some kind of capacitance that is forming out over here. So this has been made to make a triple band absorber. So what you can do again, the subcells one and subcells two are identical. And here, instead of scaling, what you are having, you are having the orthogonal orientation with respect to each other. And if you just go with proper optimization, you can achieve at three distinct frequencies, the absorptions, which is close to 100%. Okay, so this one can be achieved accordingly. And what you can see accordingly that if you go with, uh, this is again the experimental one that I'm just showing over here, that again, the simulated and experimental results are in good uh, uh, agreement. And if you want to, you know that if you want to extract the parameters from uh, this one, that if you want to extract the permittivity and the permeability. So what you will get as a result that at these two frequencies, you will get the effective permittivity are becoming equal, okay? That both the permittivity and the permeability, you can see that they are getting equal over here and which gives you the minimization of the reflected power as I have told you the, the, I, a, couple, a few slides earlier. So at each and every point, you can see these two are nearly equal, these two are nearly equal and so on. So this is the main concept that where you can have a good absorption. So now I'm coming with, well, that in the terahertz one, as I have started, so what you can have, that you can take that, you, you can make a proper customization between the microwave and the optical region. So basically what you can do that I have make a, made a comment over here, this is simultaneously, you can have the exciting as well as the frustrating sector because that since you have to do a proper customization, so you don't have the available, you know, there's some kind of conventional source or detector. You have to make a proper customization and hence to do experimental kind of thing, especially in terahertz region, 
it is very very difficult in currently in india and in also some parts it has been started but um, still it is much very very difficult and uh, so here the main idea is that since you are operating a terahertz region so the associated energy will be much lesser and you can easily approach it for any kind of you know security application or sensing application suppose you can see over here that some gun has been hidden within this bag or this person is carrying some knife beneath the newspaper which can be easily detected by using the terahertz uh, spectrum and uh, this can be used for making some kind of absorber applications so what you can do you have to choose the, uh, the uh, materials very carefully especially whenever you want to design in terahertz region you have to go with the chemical stability you have to think for the mechanical support everything and what you have to do the top layer that when you are the bottom layer whenever you are using the metals this metals you have to characterize it properly characterize means what i am telling this should be used by following the drude model you can't consider that any kind of you know that inbuilt applications or inbuilt value you can't take for any kind of material rather you should go for any kind uh, you have to take care of the drude model for making the proper modeling of the metal and accordingly also you can also make uh, a broadband absorber in the terahertz region i am not discussing all these ones in details if you want you can go through these papers that i have cited over here now i am showing that one of our recent work in uh, this meta surface absorber that how you can make in the other way this is one of the interesting work that what you can have you are having a single band absorber at which has been designed at 10 micron and here you are having the dielectric bottom side is the metallic reflector here you are having the the resonating meta surface or the resonating metallic pattern i can say so here the wave is incident and getting partially transmitted and reflected back so i have we have made some kind of you know that relations okay so this work has been recently accepted in journal of optical society of america b josa b one of the famous journal in the area of the optics so what we are doing that we are showing that well if we think about the dielectric thickness and if we increase it by a value of lambda d by 2 so what we can show that if i consider at either at 0.28 or 2.38 or 4.48 so what you can have that once we are taking this value so what you are having the resonance of the structure that gets repeated by itself okay this is one of the interesting factor and hence it is basically acting as a fabry pero cavity mode okay and uh, what you can have if you try to put or if you try to plot the electric field variation so what you can have that once you can see the electric field variation so this end and this end this is basically the the two start two ends of the structure if you go in the z direction along with the thickness of the dielectric this end of this the two ends so either with this one or with the second one or in the third one for the first second and the third uh, case respectively and what you can find that depending upon the value of the ex that is whether they are positive or negative you can show that what is the how what is the nature of the surface current of the medium okay so if you see at the two ends in this case either at this end or at this end both of them are positive if you go with this one this they are basically in the first case it is positive second case it is negative if you go to the third one the both of them are again positive okay so what you can have so you can consider here that i am just writing like this way this is plus this is plus okay here you are having this is plus this is minus here again we are having this is plus this is plus okay so these are the three different cases of the electric field now from here if you want to plot the surface current so if you want to make the you know that if you want to uh, find out that what is the value of the epsilon effective value so what you can have that in all the cases you can find that at the two ends that uh, they are basically positive at all these ones so if you consider at 10 micron so if you see either at this one this is positive you at 10 micron this value is also positive again at 10 micron this value is also positive okay now what is the interesting thing if you want to plot the surface current of the uh, that uh, in the in the meta surface that is in the top region and in the bottom region you can write like this way now what is happening this epsilon reflector so that is comprising the metal one in the bottom complete metal surface so you can consider this is always negative okay and what you can have that this is always negative and 
this one is always positive as we have found out now what you can do the depending upon the ex nature so you can do the uh, do the needful so if you consider the first case so what is happening both of them are this is plus this is plus in the second case what you are having this is plus this is minus in the third case what you are having again this is plus this is plus so if you consider this one so if you consider this so what is happening omega is always positive so what is happening if you just multiply this so minus into plus so this is here in the first case what is happening the jx meta surface value in the first case it is plus okay while jx meta surface value in the first case it is minus in the second case again it is in the second and third case also they are plus and plus respectively but in the second case here it is plus in the third place it is minus so what you can have the first and third case you can see that jx meta surface in the, they are having the opposite signs which basically constitute they are in the opposite in phase or in the other words they are anti parallel in nature while in the second case both of them are in plus that is they are in phase or they are parallel in nature so this is one of the basic uh, implication or uh, i can say that the basic conclusion from this particular mathematical understanding all in the other way that further if you want to do some kind of time domain analysis so what you can do you can convert the uh, reflection from the structure okay you into the time domain analysis of the multiple reflection by having the inverse charge this transform which is nothing but a variation of the a generalized uh, form of a dft structure so what you can have that over here if you change this one so you are getting suppose if you are taking so you are getting the reflection at different time instance like t1 t2 t3 you can compute like this way that as we are showing over here and what you can do you can find it from you can compute it by using the numerical analysis and you can compute it by making this ones okay by having this age values okay so what you can do that you can see over here that whenever the this one is 0.08 picosecond and again it is matching this is 0.15 and numerically you are getting 0.138 which is quite close the third one is 0.215 and again it is 0.196 again it is quite close so they are very close with respect to each other so one can uh, go with this kind of you know that you can basically go or uh, verify your results okay and as you increase the thickness so what you have the first peak it will arrive at the same time while the second and third peak that is becoming a function of td3 which this one is which is nothing but a function of this one so as td3 will increase that uh, with the second and third one so this time instant will increase and hence they will arrive at a certain at a later stage so you can have that peak from the response from here also the other way round so i am just also explaining the uh, the meta surface polarization converter application so here is a polarization converter so what is happening that suppose the initial so, sorry uh, that if i am going with this one oh, okay. okay so what you can have in this case that whenever we are going with this one so here that you can consider the electric field along this direction and wave is propagating along this direction so i'm just writing this is k a and this is my electric field orientation e okay and what you can have that here once it is coming out okay that wave is over here they are basically making wave is getting propagated over along this direction which is k but what you are having the electric field it is getting oriented along this direction okay so it's a making a change of polarization by an angle of 90 degree okay so this is a kind of polarization converter of the structure so what you can do that you can consider the copolarized transmission okay that is if you just want to compute the electric field along the same direction of the original transmission okay so there you are having the minimization of the component but if you will receive a maximum field if you orient it or if you just rotate it by a angle by an angle of 90 degrees so accordingly you can do the needful and here i am showing you the polarization converter with enhanced bandwidth so here what you are having you are making some kind of asymmetry in the unit cell of the meta atom so this is the meta atom patch this over here there's some metallic patch and you are having some asymmetric nature and what you can have you can see exactly the same thing the copolarized reflections 
are getting minimized while the cross polarized one are getting maximized so the polarization conversion ratio which basically go with the reflected here in this case since it's a reflective type polarization converter so it's basically the reflected power by of the cross polarized direction divided by the incident reflected power in the co polarized one plus the reflected power in the cross polarized one and accordingly you can find out that what is the polarization conversion ratio or this in turn gives you the polarization conversion efficiency and you can also make it in the experimentally you can validate so to measure the co polarized one this is the structure or this is the setup so you are keeping the sample over here the transmitting and the receiving antenna are in identical direction while in this other case the transmitting and the receiver one they are in the 90 degree orthogonal plane okay here, here the sample that you are getting the cross polarized reflection okay and uh, what i can show over here that you can also make a transmitive type polarizer okay so here you are making that see distinct layers in the terahertz domain so what you are having you are going with the middle layer which is basically chiral as well as asymmetric in nature so depending on and you are making with a fractal order okay and accordingly with the optimization of this one so you can optimize the bandwidth of the polarization conversion in the terahertz domain and here you can see the uh, or you can visualize the electric field if it is oriented along this direction in the top surface and while it is coming out you are having an exactly 90 degree uh, you know that rotation over here and you can see that the angle between the co and cross polarized range over this particular range it is close to 90 degree and there also the structure is non dispersive in nature as dtdf it is a flat line or transmission coefficient is you know that you can consider with respect it is a constant of frequency so you can make it from this one and also you can validate this structure by using the brewster angle concept the fundamental concept that uh, all of you know that whenever the wave is incident on the structure that you know that uh, if you were just making it incident with a brewster angle of the electric field so what you will have the complete wave will be transmitted and there will be zero reflection and accordingly you can achieve it over here and accordingly from that theory you can you know cross verify your uh, uh, your obtained result accordingly so from this one that uh, this is one response and also you can use this meta surface for some kind of antenna applications and here i am showing you some of the antennas that which we have fabricated and measured in our lab for so one antenna has been measured for the dual band applications so this is the top view and here is the top patch which has been slotted down and you know which has been optimized and each and every step have been properly analyzed and similarly in the bottom one so what you get instead of the complete ground plane you are making a defected ground and you are incorporating some kind of meta surface structure over here with this kind of array some 4 plus 5 array and what you can do you can see over here the simulated and experimental results they are in good matching and in the simulated one so what you can see the lower so you are having in the two different bands and the first band that is encompassing a high bandwidth okay that uh, with comparison with the second one and here you are having some kind of you know that some good return loss and co cross polarized pattern they are also in a good agreement and uh, you can find a good separation between the two and uh, also in all the frequencies the gain are in fact remaining constant that it's good in nature and you are having some identical pattern so uh, that is one of the uh, the applications of this dual band antenna and also that recently we have shown that uh, this the gain can be uh, you know that gain can be significantly enhanced or you can basically achieve some kind of you know some kind of uh, uh, lens application by using this uh, uh, this antenna applications that where you are using some kind of super strip so here you can see it in a much better way so here what you are having you are having a metallic patch okay and here this patch has been you know that they have been uh, printed over a top view of a dielectric and the bottom one you are having some kind of you know that uh, bottom one you are having this some kind of slot okay you are feeding from this side okay and what you are having you are having a teflon layer in between as you can see from the fabricated structure and on top of that one you are having an array of meta surface design and once you are going with the measurement in the, by using the vector network analyzer the simulated and the measured one again you are uh, getting in the x band but here the bandwidth is somewhat lesser but you are getting very high gain and which is constant over the complete band 
and you can see that by using the Teflon layer, you can basically enhance the bandwidth a little bit if you go with the conventional air spacer. Okay. And uh, here you can see that what I was just telling you few minutes, just few seconds ago, that you can see the gain, which is considerably large at all this operating frequency that where you are getting the, uh, you know, that S11 is less than 10 dB, you are getting a gain as high as 8 dBi or 7.1 dBi or 7 dBi. So at all this one, you are getting more than, uh, that you can see that more than uh, 7 dBi gain, you are achieving at all the over, over the complex frequency band. And this is the experimental results. You already know that this is the radiation pattern measurement, which is the setup within the anechoic chamber and the simulated and experimental responses are in good agreement. Okay. And uh, now let me tell you that uh, also we have done some kind of simulation work, which has been carried out by one of our, the, one of the students who had come here for some summer internship and done very good uh, work and come out uh, with the, the, with a particular design, giving some kind of high you know, that the multiband response in a terahertz uh, region. The silicon, uh, dialog, uh, si silicon dioxide dielectric, they have uh, designed this, uh, uh, this, particular, uh, this particular structure and uh, they have come up with a multiband uh, operation and giving a very, very good gain pattern, okay, with a very high gain pattern also. At six different frequencies, it has been, uh, it has been achieved. And also, the, you can, can find out the efficiencies also. Uh, uh, also, it is greater than 50%, which is quite uh, justified at the terahertz range, because you know that, uh, uh, that in fact, you, you, you can say that in general, for the efficiency in the photoconductive antenna, it is low due to the impedance mismatch between the feeding system and the radiating element that is the path itself. So, and you can also observe over here that the entire characteristics has been achieved for the E field response, okay? And for the H field, you are having some kind of omnidirectional pattern, okay? And uh, now I am telling you some of the recent, uh, but very recent development where one can uh, use graphene in the meta surface. So what is graphene? So graphene is basically a two-dimensional allotrope of carbon, okay, in the sp2 bonded carbon atoms in a honeycomb lattice. And you can basically go with the conductivity modulation by applying the suitable gating of the structure. And hence what you can do, you can go with the Fermi level can be altered accordingly. So one can, we have also defined some kind of cross polarization converter. And uh, let me tell you that I don't know whether this is the proper platform or not. So we are the first group in India who has started working in the, this graphene based meta surface. So what we are having that this, uh, this graphene based structure has been deposited on top of the silicon dioxide layer, which on the other side, it has been backed by some kind of cold layer. And with this structure, if you optimize properly, what you can get, you can get some kind, again, this, you know, the result or the, uh, the basic aim of a the design of a cross polarization converter. So you have the co-polarized response has been minimized while the cross polarized response has been maximized to give you an enhancement of the polarization conversion ratio, okay? And uh, what you can have that if you change the tau value, tau is nothing but the scattering time between the two electrons or, or nothing but the collision between the time between the two electrons. Basically, you can consider this is nothing but depending upon the film quality of graphene. So accordingly, you can say that the, the response is more or less constant, ex except uh, whenever you are having a very low tau value, that is when the film is very poor in nature, that otherwise you are having a uh, more or less, you can consider a steady response. If you change the, uh, the, uh, the chemical potential, so what you can have, that as I have told you, that the conductivity will be modulated and accordingly, the polarization conversion efficiency will be changed as you can see from here. And uh, also you can design some uh, split ring uh, cross polarization converter where on the top graphene surface, you are making up some slots, okay? And uh, again, on the dielectric, you can uh, design this one. And you see what is the nature? If you see the polarization conversion ratio, what you are getting, that you are getting a flat one over the band and which is basically close to unity. So this is the one of the beauty of this structure. And uh, what we have seen that if you see that both the structure offers you very high fractional bandwidth, which is maintaining the, you know, the periodicity of the unit cell is quite small. Okay, that is you, you are making in the, you know, that they are lying in the uh, effective permittivity and effective permeability. You can 
go with the effective medium concept or the homogeneity uh, uh, homogeneity property has been validated okay and uh, what you can also have this graphene based structure had also been used for some kind of absorbing application and this is the graphene structure deposited on a silicon dioxide and bottom one is again the grounded and this structure what you can have you can see that the absorptivity is 90% over the range of 6.08 terahertz over here and uh, what you can see you can see that this structure is uh, again polarization insensitive in nature and you can have a good control with the variation of the uh, of the fermi level of the graphene so this is one of the applications over here and uh, also you can see that uh, compared to the existing one this structure offers you the very good fractional bandwidth compared with the other reported structure and here i am now i am telling you another interesting one here there is no presence of metal the both the sides have been you know they you have used uh, graphene and here you are having the silicon dioxide substrate the top side is also graphene bottom side is also graphene so what you have to do that you have to uh, see that what is the reflectivity and what is the transmittivity response and both of them you can see that the the continuous graphene surface they are much more metallic in nature and they are offering you some kind of smooth uh, or some kind of zero value okay so what you can have that uh, that you can see that very high uh, uh, that very high bandwidth can be achieved and you see over here the thing is since you are having two different graphene layers so basically you are having multi controllability of the tuning of the absorption band which you can see from here so here this is one of the you know you can we, we offer some kind of proposed mechanism for the uh, the fabrication of the device so what you are having you are having this is the silicon dioxide surface so on the top and bottom you are having the graphene graphene layers you are basically having another silicon dioxide layer with uh, which is acting as an insulator and which has been you know that uh, which has been uh, you or which has been grounded by using a gold layer so since uh, it's a metal layer with respect to this one this graphene you are changing by vg2 one chemical one voltage and you are having the vg1 which basically controls the response of the top uh, graphene layer and if you see the uh, the uh, this with this biasing setup and with the uh, with the design whatever we have proposed earlier they are more or less identical in nature so it hardly changes our response and once you are going with this one so here in this case only the top level graphene uh, fermi level has been changed to tune the absorption bandwidth here the other case the top level remains constant while the bottom level is has been tuned to change the absorption bandwidth of the uh, yeah yeah so so what you can have you are having that in the by keeping either of the graphene level uh, fermi level constant you can tune the second uh, graphene level uh, fermi level to tune the absorption bandwidth so this is one of the idea this is one of the achievement from this particular structure okay and also we had also proposed that how a graphene structure can be used for a linear to circular polarization converter so here the incident wave is linear in nature while the wave that is coming out that is circularly polarized the ct in nature so this is the top view of the structure here you are having some metallic patch or metallic slots in the ground plane and this structure this one has this work has been just recently uh, just uh, just 15 20 days ago it has been accepted uh, this work and um, what you can see over here that uh, here the basic nature is you should have to achieve the circular polarization you should have the copolarized and cross polarized component that should be exactly equal in magnitude and they should also have 90 degree phase difference and this has been achieved at three distinct frequency of 5.7 to 13.49 and 8.18.90 terahertz and you can see the axial ratio which basically gives you the you know the copolarized with respect to the cross polarized component if you just comp if you just can compute you can find they are having a good matching they are less than 3 dB at all these three frequencies and if you replace this uh, graphene with a metallic patch what you can get you will get that uh, that well if you see this one even in this case that you are getting some kind of axial ratio but the axial ratio is not uh, close to 3 dB it is still higher than 3 dB so you are not getting any kind of you know that circular polarization the uh, the resultant wave is still it is uh, elliptically polarized so this is the one that why this graphene has been used and we have also shown that compared to the uh, the existing one 
with a single band in nature, we can show that we are having a better angular stability and we are having with a triple band response. And the thickness you can see it's the lambda by 26 that is greater than or less than lambda by 10 to make it a, an ultra thin structure. And also you can support the effective homogeneity limit in this case. So all these criteria have been satisfied. And let me come to the very last topic that we have just made it uh, uh, recently, a pixel based metasurface application. So here again, we had developed some absorber. So what we are doing over here, that here, one substrate has been designed or considered which has been made by polymide, backed by a gold metallic gold layer. And the top layer, you, you see that it is not completely designed. You are having some kind of, you are using two different materials. One is INSB and another one is indium arsenide. And what you can see that both these metals, so once you are making it and if you are applying the magnetic field externally, so this one is known as, so if the magnetic field is, uh, uh, is basically, if it is oriented along X direction, it is known as Voigt X configuration. Okay, so I will come to that one very soon. So this Voigt X configuration will provide you that, uh, that how you can get the magnetic tunability. So void X configuration, as I am mentioning over here. So this, what you are doing, this is the meta atom or the unit cell with seven different configurations. So what you can have here, all the pixels have been made with INSB. Here, this one all by INS and subsequently you are making the variations. And what you can do that you can find out here, the basically it has been considered while you are computing the absorption bandwidth or absorption peak, we have considered the absorption peak should have a minimum value of 90%. What does it mean? That this value, that whatever you are getting this value, it should be minimum, it should have a value of 0 0.9 or 90%. So what you can get that once you are changing the magnetic field, you can see in the last case that is in meta atom seven, or in this particular case of the meta atom seven, you can get the highest tunability that is, you are getting a complete controllability of uh, the, with the change of the magnetic field, you can have a gradual shift of the absorption peak. So you can think of some kind of coarse and fine tuning by application of the mag external magnetic field in this case. And suppose if the external magnetic field is oriented along X direction, it is known as Voigt X configuration. And accordingly, you can tune this one. So this work has just recently uh, it accepted in the last week in applied optics. So very soon, the, I think that in the, in the coming week, uh, it will be available. So if you are interested, you can go through the details of this work. And if you have any question, I'll be very happy to answer regarding that one. And uh, so before I end it up, so let me just thank that the work which has been carried out by some of these, I, I couldn't present their work due to the shortage of time. So the last two years, we got some very good summer interns. And in fact, a couple of them had published. Uh, so this two, the first two fellows have come up with a journal paper that I have just mentioned that uh, the, this, which is the uh, antenna in the terahertz range, which they have designed and uh, which has been reported. So they have carried out this work less than 1.5 months. Okay. And uh, these are the some other interns which has, uh, who were here last year. Okay. And they came from Kerala. In fact, some of them came from Kerala. Some of them came from West Bengal and they have done very good works. Okay. I'm uh, very fortunate to have them. And, uh, and I also am very much lucky to have some good PhD students and master students in our lab that some of them are the, among the master students. Some of them are graduated and some of their works are now under progress. And we got some, uh, I am very much thankful to my institute to get some kind of initial support. And also from SERB, we got some kind of initial grant that uh, to go for the partial funding of the research. And uh, here are some of my collaborators with whom I am currently working. Professor Chakraborty, who is currently the director of IIST Shipur, and Professor PK Jain, the current director of NIT Patna. Professor Lattakia, one of the senior professors in Penn State University. Dr. Santanu Das, my colleague over here in ceramic engineering department. We are now uh, planning for some kind of fabrication of the device. Dr. Chinmoy Shaha from IIST Srivandam, a very well-known figure, I think, that uh, to all of you. Dr. Chittajit Sharkar, another very young and, uh, you know, that another hard hardworking researcher from Kolkata. And Dr. Smithy Divedi, another, my another colleague uh, from my own department. So with them, I 
used to collaborate and making i am trying to do some kind of research as i have presented over here and again this is our beautiful campus in iit bhu varanasi the famous bp or the vishwanath temple you are most welcome to visit the city over here and this is this one is having you know the highest peak within the varanasi and it's a, it's a plain land just you consider that fact so it is having the highest peak and you are most welcome to visit us and uh, uh, so let me thank over here and uh, if you have any further question or if you want to visit my more research about work about me you can just mail me or visit my website thank you very much hello dr de hello Uh, hello am i audible sorry yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so what thank you uh, professor vatteshri uh, for uh, i believe that uh, your research works have enlightened uh, many research minds today and uh, this will surely going to encourage us to do some work in this particular domain so thanks once again for for your nice talk i now the, the floor is open for question and question and answer and i request all participants please unmute your microphone and ask the questions directly to the speaker yeah i'll be very happy sir good evening sir this is abdul yeah good evening tell yeah. sir uh, i have one question in uh, meta metal absorber sir mm -hmm. uh, sir uh, for uh, we are uh, this meta metal uh, meta surface works on the principle of this plasmonic resonance mm -hmm. sir actually for the magnetic resonance the, the currents on the top surface means top fss and the ground planes are anti parallel sir yeah. sir what the physical reason behind why these currents are getting anti parallel at the particular at one particular frequency i want to know that reason okay okay if you are having okay let me try like this way so let me just try like this way okay just let me go to the full screen yeah so uh, yeah so if you are having one surface it is like this one okay the other one you are having anti parallel right yes, so essentially what you can have you are having in between them you are having this is my, your dielectric i'm just writing it by d okay yes, so what you can con consider you are having some kind of you know that current flow like this way and you are having some kind of current flow like this way within the dielectric you are getting some kind of circulating current okay so this circulating current this has been supported you can consider by i am just writing just drawing it like this way by a magnetic field okay which is perpendicular to the direction of this current okay so you can have this particular uh, perpendicular to the direction of current you know that if you are having a current that is been incident on a metallic strip so what you are getting you are getting a current like that way right so this one is known as magnetic excitation so this is very much important for the uh, the purpose at the whenever you are going with the plasmonic resonance you should have both magnetic uh, magnetic uh, either you should have a magnetic resonance or you should have an electric resonance if you go with electric resonance in that case both of them are parallel as i mentioned with the meta surface design for the time domain analysis sir uh, here my uh, sir is this same uh, how we study the uh, current uh, if you take the some metallic wave guide mm -hmm. yes sir in that also top uh, plate uh, and bottom plate having the anti parallel current to no, get but, the power no, no, but, yeah so basically here you can consider this is not a metallic wave guide rather it is a parallel plate wave guide you can consider like yes sir yeah yes sir parallel plate wave guide yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. is it the same concept uh, yeah same concept the... same concept because you are here we are having that if you consider that why you are taking the that how one whenever you are simulating the unit cell by using the floquet mode you are getting the repetition of this suppose you, you suppose you consider that you are having an unit cell like this okay and you are having so what is happening this is surrounded by an identical unit cell like this one or like this one okay and similarly in the other direction also just let you let me just think you think like this way suppose in this direction the current is like this so here also you should have a current like this way 
or if you are having a comment like this way you should have a comment like this way so basically you can have some kind of you can consider either you are having some kind of you know that uh, so either you are having some kind of pec wall or you are having some kind of pmc wall so basically you are basically simulating under the parallel set wavelet environment okay okay yeah thank you sir yeah thank you professor samak patacharya yeah yeah it was a very nice presentation yeah, thank and, you uh, i must uh, congratulate you for that uh, tribute to the jc boss you have given mm -hmm. because usually we talk about only maxwell hertz and uh, marconi like that but uh, it was nice that you have you know like that uh, tribute to our own jc boss in your yes. Uh, talk yes i think sir he is yes. the he is the person who has uh, initiated the research on microwave uh, in india yeah sure but the many students yes. uh, uh, don't know about yeah, that yeah 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 <laughs> that is a thing and not only in india uh, over the world he is one of the renowned figures and we don't pay our tribute you know yeah, that yeah. to our local people whether we used to you know that we used to mm. worship the foreigners that is the yeah, kind of is, attitude we is, are having yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir yeah yeah i have one more question sir yeah sir sure, sir sure. yeah yeah sure. sir whatever the things uh, that you have shown we called the thing as metametal absorber mm -hmm. sir is it necessary to uh, say this thing as metametal absorber uh, that uh, both epsilon and mu effective or negative means no, a double no 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 that's exactly i told you yes sir uh, let me just go to this point that is exactly one that i told you that in meta surface absorber what i told you i think that is this one clear to you Yes, if you are That's having a complete metal, then one minus s one one squared this absorption coefficient, and what you can have that absorption can be enhanced one s one one will be close to zero, right? Yes, yes. Now, now how you can make that reflection coefficient equal to zero? So if you put from here, so you can make z omega equal to eta naught, right? Yes, sir. So so how you can define z omega? This is nothing but Mu not by epsilon not into uh, mu epsilon mu or uh, mu epsilon. I'm just writing like this way. Yes, mu sir. e by epsilon e. Yes. So that will be equal to root over e. mu not by epsilon e not. Epsilon not. Right. Yes. Sir. So what will happen? This mu not mu not. This epsilon not epsilon not will cancel each other. So what is this meaning? Root over mu e by epsilon e equal to one. One. So that means that mu effective. Will be equal to epsilon effective. So both the quantities that you know that both the mu and epsilon they constitute of the real and imaginary part. So now yes. what you have to make that you, you if you are having two complex quantities z1 equal to z2. So what you how you can write it x1 plus j y1 equal to x2 plus j y2. So that means x1 equal to x2 and y1 equal to y2. So accordingly you should have the real parameters or real part will be equal. as well as the imaginary part will be equal and exactly the same thing you can see over here the real parts are nearly equal for all these cases and imaginary parts are also nearly equal for all these cases okay okay please just 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 don't don't go with that definition of epsilon mu is negative this is an absolutely wrong definition and i am telling you i am very sorry to say that yes, uh, that most of the people in not only in india in abroad they they believe in uh, this definition and this is a completely wrong one the best in the meta surface means you are having a periodic metallic structure or periodic structure with sub wavelength periodicity okay and while illuminated properly they exhibit some kind of unusual electromagnetic properties unusual means that you can compute or you can control this epsilon mu value by having the by choosing the proper dimension of length width or some other or maybe some the dielectric pattern or by choosing the proper you know that uh, the dimensions and the characteristics of the unit cell itself so this is the basic definition of meta surface 
so then means that this is not necessary to say the metamethyl uh, means having both epsilon and mu negative no 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 completely that's wrong. no need completely no need. wrong so that is that what you are telling that is known as double negative medium yes, or dng medium double negative medium all the double negative medium are meta surface but the reverse is not true yes okay yes thank you sir. yeah I will be happy to answer other questions also. Any more questions from the participants? We have few more times, so I think it is too much boring. So that's why they are not asking. <laughs> okay. So if uh, there is no such questions, then I think uh, we should thank the speaker. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I can only thank you, Dr. Somak Bharwali. <laughs> so thank you so much once again for accepting our request and uh, now i would like to request uh, professor abdullah to say vote of thanks and conclude the session hello dr somak bhattacharya Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, Dr. Abdullah. You. Yeah, thank yeah. you. At the outset, I should say you are an excellent teacher. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the way how you presented your work, you know, starting from history and it is slowly moving and to go up and up to the graphene structures. And you have a very, very wonderful experience, definitely. And uh, I don't know why our participants uh, they didn't ask much question. You have done excellent work in your field also. Thank so, you. So, Thank you. And it is due to our students. I think the due yeah, to yeah, be that is why I'm telling students. you are an excellent teacher because you know you are loving your students also. Normally, most of the EITs they don't like to take internship. <laughs> you know, they will be mainly focused on real research, regular yeah. research students. Like yeah. Of course, they will take their own PG students. And yeah. you are taking uh, students from, even you said you who took students from Kerala also. It's a very good sign. Normally happens for a generous and, you know, those who are having a lo love in their work and it's, it's, you keep it, keep it up because, you know, most of the uh, IIT faculties don't like because they don't want, to want, they don't want to waste their time by taking this internship. <laughs> You know that better than me. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So in that way also, that's what I am. Uh, no, what I, I believe, what what I believe, sir, that the students are not bad. It is the way, the why. It is very easy, you know, that to blame the students. But yeah. what I personally feel that if you can motivate them properly, mm -hmm. so they will do, uh, you know, that beautiful job. This is yeah, my own understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what when you are yeah. in a good environment, you know, actually yeah. that is the thing. The students they are changing their attitude. Yes, yes, I, yes. I, I fully agree with you. Uh, we should not say the students are bad. Actually, yeah. they are good. The thing is that they are reached in a wrong pl platform. That is yeah, the reason yeah, they are yeah. not shining yeah. and they are not showing yeah. their exact. Yes, yes, yes. That is I true. Agree. That is obvious. I agree. I agree. That is why uh, in our country also facing, you know, you, yes. said, you said, except a few IAT, how many institutes we have sufficient facilities and these things for uh, Conducting real research, you know, we are yes. all doing some simulation in these softwares. Most of the colleges, that is not the case in, you know, other developed countries. That is true. Yes. That is the thing they are developing, they are growing, and we are <laughs> always <laughs> underdeveloped. <laughs> yeah. That is a, that's a real fact. And yeah. anyway, uh, thank you for sharing your uh, valuable time with our students and uh, IEEE peers. And uh, I extend on behalf of uh, IEEE APS Kerala section and on behalf of all the participants, and as uh, Sugmol <laughs> told, only thank you. Thank you can be extended. Uh, and uh, keep in touch with our <coughs> chapter also because you know, yeah. a lot of research scholars are there. They are regularly attending this uh, talk. They yeah. will definitely contact you because you yeah. have done a very if, if, wonderful if, 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 job in theoretically and practically also. 
if you, if you have some more questions in fact from any one of you so just drop me one yeah, email yeah, or, yeah. or you can they will uh, they, is they, they most of them hesitate to ask they will uh, get called, uh, disturb you definitely yeah 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 i'll be very happy yeah thank yeah. you thank you once again i extend my sincere gratitude and i also extend uh, thanks to all the participants who joined this talk and uh, i invite them for the next talk also keep on update your knowledge only through these uh, types of webinar at this uh, pandemic period and uh, with this uh, i think we can conclude today's session once again thank you for uh, our uh, dr sugwal and as uh, patajaria and uh, students and all the participants once again uh, we, thank you and good night thank you yeah. thank you thank you sir very good night to all of you oh.